Okay, this is lesson 5.6. Using multiplicative inverses to solve equations. The whole purpose of this lesson is to teach you how to use multiplicative inverses to solve equations. Okay. Alrighty, so let's see here. Multiplicative inverse to solve an equation that has a fractional coefficient. That's the important part we're talking about specifically when you have a fraction as a coefficient. You can multiply each side of the equation by the fraction's multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse of a non-zero number is the number's reciprocal. So, let's to look right here in this area. The rule says that if you take a number, let's say we have a number A and we multiply it by its reciprocal, which would be its multiplicative inverse, so A the inverse, or sorry, the reciprocal of A would be 1 over A. A is the same as saying A over 1. So the reciprocal would be 1 over A. And then we multiply them, we get 1. So looking at a regular example with numbers, if we have 5 sevenths and we decide to multiply it times its reciprocal, that would be 7 fifths, it would equal 1. And how does that work? Because 5 times 7 is 35 divided by 7 times 5, which is also 35. That's how we get 1. So let's look at an example. Again, the only time I'm going to recommend that you use this particular step or process is when you are only dealing with one fraction and it happens to be the coefficient on a variable. That's the only time. So here we have this example here. 4 sevenths x equals negative 12. All right. In order to get x by itself, we, well, we gotta isolate the variable. In order to get x by itself, we gotta get rid of that coefficient because it happens to be a fraction. What we'll do, and you might think to yourself, wait, well, shouldn't I just divide both sides by four sevenths by the fraction? In math, we, whenever we want to divide by fractions, we're really multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, that's the way to handle it. So we're not going to divide both sides by um, four sevenths instead. So let me get the next line here. Okay. I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So, and what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. We must do it to both sides. Okay? And then we would have 28 over 28. That gives us 1. So, the x would be here by itself. These cancel. Equals. And now, 7 fourths times negative 12. So let me just say that negative 12 is the same as saying negative 12 over 1. And so then when we actually do the multiplication, we would have 7 times negative 12, which is negative 84. So let me, where's my pen? Okay, so negative 84 over 4, and this will reduce to become negative 21. So the solution is negative 21. And remember, we must always check our solutions. Okay? Again, only use this process when you are dealing with one fraction and it happens to be the coefficient on a variable that you are trying to isolate. So let's look at an example where that's not necessarily the case, where you don't just have one fraction as a coefficient. In this case, we have multiple fractions. And fractions, even though I think fractions are our friends, most students don't feel that way. So I say, first step, let's get rid of the fractions altogether. So for a situation like this, I'm going to say first step is to get rid of the fractions. Makes the problem, it makes solving the problem so much easier. All right, how do we do it? The way that we do it, we're going to multiply every single term by the common denominator. All right? Multiply every single term. This part is so important. Multiply each term by common denominator. What meaning, what number does 3, 5, and 15 all divide evenly into? What's the smallest number? The least common denominator, that's what we're talking about. Multiply each term by the least common denominator. So, hopefully you're thinking 15. 15 divides evenly into 15, 5 goes evenly into 15, and 3 goes evenly into 15. 
in this case we're going to multiply every single term by the least common denominator so this is what I'm saying I'm going to multiply 15 times negative 11 fifteenths x I'm going to multiply 15 which is 15 over 1 um, times 4 fifths and because the 4 fifths is positive I put the positive symbol here equals 15 over 1 times 1 third. We must multiply it by every single term. Okay? So then when we multiply, let's go ahead and begin to simplify. The 15's are going to cancel, leaving us with negative 11x. Then I have 15, there's two different ways that we can do it. I'll say if you have 15 times 4, that's 60. 60 divided by 5 is what? Hopefully you're thinking 12. So we now have 11x plus 12 equals, and this is 15, when we multiply it will be 15 times 1, which is 15 over 3, which is 5. Now, isn't this so much easier to deal with? Okay? So first step, get rid of the fraction. Second step, multiply each term by the least common denominator. And then I'll say your last step is to just solve the equation. Okay, so in trying to isolate x, because 12 is positive, I'm going to use the opposite. The opposite of positive 12 is a negative 12. That, use the opposite on both sides. Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> negative 11x equals negative 7. And I'm trying to get x by itself. Since negative 11 is being multiplied times x, we need to divide both sides by negative 11. Okay, and therefore x equals positive 7 over 11. How did I get that? Because we're doing a negative divided by a negative that gives us a positive. And this would be our answer. Remember, we must always check our solutions. Do, do, do. Okay, work. Last example. There are currently 1,680 students at Fairview Middle School. Side note, there were only like maybe 1,200 students at my undergrad college. So this is a pretty big school. Anyways, so far this school year, an average of three and a half students have enrolled at the school each week. The school has a maximum capacity of 1,750 students. If this growth rate continues, in how many weeks will the school reach its maximum student capacity? We start off by writing out an equation. All right, we know that they have a maximum capacity of 1,750 students. So how, when we add up all the students that we can have and everything, it's got, it has to be no more than or equal to 1,750. So that's the maximum. When we're adding up the parts. Okay, so right now we currently have 1,680 students. And to that, we're adding an increase of three and a half students each week. But because we don't know how many weeks, that's going to be the unknown. We don't know how many weeks yet it's going to take to reach that. So, but we know it's going to increase by three and a half each week. So this is, we represent that by writing 3.5x. That's the rate at which the population is changing. All right, so we write out our equation and then we solve. And you know what? I'm going to rewrite this because this is all about fractions. Sometimes you have to give the exact values. Sometimes I'm going to make it where you can't give your answers in decimals. So let me change this around and do it this way. Okay, just to work it out. At any rate, the process that you're going to use is the first one that I introduced because we only have one fraction and it happens to be the coefficient on the variable. Okay, so I would say what we would do first is to subtract the 1680 from both sides because it's currently positive we want to use the opposite which is the negative. Okay, and once we do that we we'll have 7 halves x equals 70. I'm trying to get x by itself. 
x is being multiplied times this fraction. You might think to yourself, okay, I'll just divide both sides by fractions. We don't divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So let's multiply both sides by two sevenths. Okay, boom, 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 boom. And so when we do this, then we have x equals, and so 70 times 2 is 140 over 7, which simplifies to become, and we must always simplify, 20, which means it would take 20 weeks to, meet, to reach maximum capacity if they maintain that rate. Okay, thanks for watching.